once again and a pleasant good afternoon to each and everyone. And we are here again to, to listen to the word of God, to the message of God. And we pray that the Holy Spirit will be the one to, to guide us and to lead us with our uh, the study of the word to hear his message. And I pray that the heart of each and every one are open to the things that God is going to say this afternoon. To all my brothers and sisters in, in different places, uh, the message that I'm going to, to deliver today is the thing that um, the things that makes you worry one of the things that makes you one of the things that makes you anxious and care about in your life if you are going to pause for a moment and then think what is your problem today what makes you worry about the things that is happening in your life or the things that is happening in your, in your family or whatsoever if you are going to think all of, about all about these things there will be a conclusion on what you really care in this life. We pray that today we will be able to have a communications and to really understand what we really care in this life. Because what you care in this life is what you are and what you are going to do. So what you put in yourself, what you worry about it, about the things that is happening, that is the things that is, will shape your, your life. That is the thing that will shape your life. So I, I ask the Father right now to, to lead us and to guide us all the discussion that He will speak to our hearts by His Spirit that we might come to know Him better and deeper in our lives that He is the one He is the only one that deserves all recognition that deserves all the glory and honor because He is the one who is working in our lives to will and to do the things that gives pleasure to Him. So thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, Amen. So church, I would like to share to you about the things that makes people worry about in their life. The things they they really care about their life. Now, some of us maybe we have been Christians. We have been Christians for a very long time, and we still question. We still question the things that is happening in our lives. We still question what are the things needed to be done in our lives in order to to say that. This is uh, my purpose. This is uh, why I am living. Now, let us see where we are right now as we study what we really care. We have to, to read the verses in the Bible, which is in Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 32. And it's saying, Therefore I say, unto you take no thought for for your life 
what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, for you shall put on, is not the life more than the meat and the body than the raiment? Behold the fowls in the air of the air, they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit of his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. How they grow, they toil not, neither, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What we shall eat, or what shall we drink, or whether shall we be clothed. For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need all these things. So we start the verse that telling us when this is the the chapters 5, 6, and 7, when our Lord Jesus Christ is explaining to the disciples about the cares of this world, the attitudes that they have been doing, they should be doing the, the personality and how they are going to respond on things, on different areas of their life. And this is one part of the area, this is the middle part. And he is saying to them, Therefore I say unto you, it's, it's like a conclusion because he is telling so many things in the first, ver uh, first verses of that chapter that you should pray, the Lord's Prayer is mentioned there. And then he concluded that, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, and what you shall put on your body. My brothers and sisters, if you are going to think what do you worry about right now, it will fall mostly on this category, on the food and the drinks, we, and, the drinks and the cares of our body, what you are going to put for your body, what we would like to care for your body. So. People are working because they need to, 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 to buy things in order to sustain their life. But the Bible says, the Lord Jesus Christ is telling, take no thought for your life. Now, when the Lord Jesus Christ is telling this one, is He telling that we should not do things or we should not work in order uh, not to think about what we are going to eat, what we are going to drink, or what we are going to put on our body. Is He teaching us not to work? Let us study carefully, because if you are going to, to read carefully about this verse, He is telling that you should not be thinking about your life. So. It sounds very peculiar because most of the people right now, they think mostly about their life. They think about their careers, they think about their income, they think where they are going to stay, they think what they are going to eat, they think about their health conditions, they think of so many things about their life. But why the Lord Jesus Christ said, take no thought for your life? What does He really mean? In one verses also in the Bible, Paul is telling to the Thessalonians in 1st, 2nd Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 10, For even when we were with you, 
Paul is saying that even though he was with them, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. If anybody is not working, he should not be eating also. Paul is telling them that they should not be lazy, a busy bodies of doing nothing. They, Paul is not teaching them to be lazy of doing nothing. And he clearly mentioned, commanded them in Thessalonians that if any would not work, neither should he eat. So, the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ said is, take no thought for your life. But Paul said is, those who will not work, they should not eat. So, is the Bible contradicting itself? Absolutely not. That's why we are here to study the Word of God, what He really means for that. So, uh, take no thought for tomorrow. What is that take no thought for your life? The word thought that mentioned here comes from the Greek word merem now. Merim now. That is the Greek word of the thought. And that merim now is to be anxious, to be troubled with cares, to care for, to look out for a thing, to seek, to promote one's interest, caring or providing for. So meaning uh, that the meren now is to be anxious, to worry about the things. Uh, you, this is the one that you are seeking in your life. Is, you are searching, you are seeking in your life. So. This is not, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ said, it's not, He is not telling that you should not work. God doesn't want His people to be lazy. And, and when He said that take no thought for your life, do not worry, be anxious, or put too much care, or seek about your life. Your life is important, but there is much more important than life. There is one verse in the Bible, I could not remember verse to verse, but somebody might remember this one. This one. Thy loving kindness is better than life. Actually, that is a song. Thy loving kindness, O Lord, is better than life. That song or that verse is telling that the loving kindness of God, it is far, far better than our life. Because if we put all our worries, our thoughts, our care about our life only, we are missing the big mark, the significant and the most important things in our life. Where in the Bible uses this meren now? In Luke chapter 10 verse 41, And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful. This is where he used the meren now and troubled about many things. Remember when Jesus Christ visited Mary and Martha. When he visited Mary and Martha, what did Martha do? He prepared so many things. He prepared, he, he so busy bodies doing things here, doing things here, preparing the things, preparing everything. He's preparing for everything. While Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus, and listening to the voice or to the to the word of God. And then Martha said, Lord, can you help me? Uh, is, he, is she not concerned of the things that I am doing? Why she is not helping me? In order to, to provide you the things that you need, the food that you are going to eat for today. 
why she is not helping me. And then the Lord said, Martha, Martha, thou art troubled, thou art careful, means thou art worry, anxious of so many things. This is what happening to the people nowadays. And also in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, this is also a very powerful verse. Be careful, Merem now. So, be anxious. Be worried for nothing. You should not be much concerned on nothing. Why? But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. I'm telling you, God is not teaching us to be lazy. What He is trying to say is, you should not focus your attention on the problem. You should not focus or worry or put put much attention or seek on the things on your life on the problems of your life, of the situation of your life. I know the situations of lots of people nowadays are really in not good conditions. It is really in bad shape because of the situation that is happening all around the world. People are lots, lots of people are getting affected because of this pandemic that is happening in this world. That's why I am giving you a message coming from the Father, a confidence that you should not focus on the things that you worry much in your life, but instead pray and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Take no thought for your life. The real meaning for that is do not put all your cares about the things, what you are going to eat, what you are going to wear, what you are going to drink. Cares of this world is the one that people seek. That will shape your character and your personality. And even people, they will commit evil things they will even commit criminal things or bad things in order to sustain their life so take no thought for your life is meaning you should not put much your attention on the things that the people care much about in this world because as a christians you are much more than these things so in, Matthew, in, in Mark chapter 4, verse 19, what's the cares of this world? And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of richness and the lust of other things entering choke the world and become unfruitful. If our life cares much of this world, we think much of the things that is what our body needs, what we need to eat, what we need to drink, then we are under the, 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 the ways of the cares of this world. The deceitfulness of riches. This is what, uh, let me explain to you the background of Mark chapter 4 verse 19. This is the parable of the sower. When the, the planter is going to plant the seed, somebody fall, some, 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 some seeds fall on the ground, on the way, on the stone, and until it is in the good soil. And this is when one part that the cares of this world, it grows properly, but the other plants that grow with him uh, become, begin to choke that uh, good plant. And he put much on the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches, the last of other things entering in, it choked the world. 
it choked the original purpose of the Christians and become unfruitful. Now, the cares of this world <coughs> is one of the deceitfulness of riches. I would like to be honest to each and every one. People right now, they are uh, making a standards based on the cares of this world. For example, I when I was uh, or when 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 a certain person is serving God. I heard one of my friends, he's also a servant of the Lord. His life is not, uh, let's say, it's not in a good condition. They are living based on what they are going to, to work for today. And so if they are not going to work for today, they will have nothing in their table. And some of the people they are going to tell to that pastor or to that servant, your life is like that because you are not following the commandments of God. Why other people will conclude that because his life is situation is not that rich, he is poor, and they will point out that his life is like that because he's not obeying the commandments of God. He is a pastor. Okay. The, the standards, even in Christian world, the standards becoming becoming more, more, less in quality. They are branding the faith of a person based on your standard of living. If, if they are telling, if God is with you, then you should have a good house, you should have a, a good transportation, you should have a good shirts, a good things in your body. Everything must be good, everything must be perfect. So they are making a standard of the faith of a person. That if you are really high in faith, then you have all these things. So who put that kind of standards in the life of a Christian? It is the cares of this world. And the deceitfulness of riches is, they think if you have all these things, then God is with you. Because God is already providing you the things that what you need. So they are concluding matters based on what they see. If you are going to check what is the life of the people during those times, uh, apostolic period, apostolic era, during the time when they are persecuted, what kind of life do they have? And even in the book of Acts, what they are doing, they are selling all their possessions and then giving it to the church in order to propagate the word of God. And there's also one situation that Ananias and Sapphira, they promise that they are going to give whatever they have sold, but they have kept something from their life. And what happened to them? They die because they commit lie to the Holy Spirit. They lie to the Holy Spirit. They are telling to Apostle Peter that uh, we are giving you everything. But the truth is, they are keeping something. And the truth of the matter is, that is their property which they have sold. They have the right what to do on that property. And still, because they lie, what happened because of that lie, they die. Now the people here in this world, most, most especially most of the preachers, they are living life in a, in a love, lavish kind of life. I, I'm not judging anybody or anyone regarding these things. But my conviction of my heart, 
what do they really care? Do they really care about the souls of other people? Or do they really care about what people they are going to think on themselves as a preacher, as a Christian? So many Christians are becoming worried Christians. They worry much because people might think, you are a Christian, then why is happening these things in your life? Why you don't have this? Why you don't have that? Why you are not living according to the, to the normal things? So they are questioning so many things in life. And there is one situation in the Bible, one story. When the disciples and our Lord Jesus Christ, they are walking, they saw this blind man. And they, they are asking, the disciple is asking, Lord, whose fault it is? Who's, uh, to whom they are going to blame? This, mind, this, blind, this blind, man, uh, blind man was born blind. And whose fault it is? It is his parents or his fault? The Lord Jesus Christ, you know what's the answer of the Lord Jesus Christ? He told to them, there's no one fault. It's not the fault of his parents and that's not his fault. God allows this to happen so that you will see the glory of God. You will see the wonderful things that God is going to do in this person's life. So, what God is trying to say, in, even in a person that has a disability person who are disabled person they could still glorify God with their disabilities you know that person without hand, without feet but he is preaching the gospel all over the world and who is glorified in that? it is God God is trying to tell to us that do not think about your, your shortcomings, about your disabilities, about your incapabilities, because God is not looking unto you on that matter. But what God is seeing unto you is what He can do unto you based on your meekness of your heart. So God is glorified in everything. What we, have. we should be thankful if we are full in body. We have hands, we have our feet and legs, we can walk, we can travel, we are very normal. It is really a shame if these people who are disabled can do things that God intended them to do. What about us? people who is complete. Where do we care our life? Where, where we are putting our life? So the deceitfulness of riches, the standard of Christian faith is not based on the richness of this world. When my conviction of my heart, people, uh, to be honest with you, We can gain knowledge of this world on how to secure everything, on how to have a security on the future that what we have. They are putting the security on the properties, on the money, on anything, on the resources to secure their future. Now, once they are secured, they have uh, secured enough money in order to secure them for the future. Then they are going to say, because I, uh, I have done that. I have done that with the wisdom in my life. So they are exalting themselves, and not they are not exalting God in their life. When I learn about those things on how to secure your life, about your future, and how to accumulate 
daily income in order to provide your needs. It, it, what happens to that is the more you depend on the natural way, the more you will be falling away from the will of God in your life. Because your confidence is more on the things that you are doing than what God is going to do unto you. You will not be using your faith because you know things are already there based on your wisdom, knowledge. But this person who has confidence in the Lord that in every day he knows that is a gift of God because he is living by the grace of God by the things that he is putting in faith in God alone and he doesn't know what will going to happen tomorrow the next day, the other day, next year, next month, whatsoever we don't know our life there is a story in the Bible a certain rich young man he said that uh, I have richness in this world I will make a greater barn a warehouse, a bigger warehouse so that uh, I could put all the resources there. Then I could eat, drink, and be merry, and sleep well, because I don't have to worry about the things that I'll be needing for tomorrow, the next day, the other day. But is, what is the response of our Lord Jesus Christ? The response of our Lord Jesus Christ is, Thou art a fool, man. Because you don't know that tonight, your soul will be required. So where you are going to use all these things? So which is much more important? Which much more you put your cares? Cares for this world? Or the things that God wants you to be in this life? Now, if you are deceived by the richness of this world, then the last of other things will enter into your life. You know, the, the human nature, they are never contented on the things that they have. If a person have a cell phone, this is a human nature. He has a cell phone. And then, he, when he has a cell phone, and his cell phone has limitations, and the other people can do much more things with their cell phones other than your cell phones because it has limitations. He will desire a greater things than those other people. If a person is having a local cell phone, having no brand name, and the people around him or her is using a cell phone with a brand name, with a signature, what is happening is, he will work hard, he will strive more just to get the same thing what people others have in order to equate himself to the other people. So he, 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 he will think that I, I, I am part of this community because I'm having the same thing what do they have. So he is equating already his life based on the cares of this world. Why? Because the last already entered in his mind. The Bible says, He who confers himself are not wise. If you are keep comparing yourselves, that this person have, I don't have. This person have, I don't have. This person have, I don't have. And then you blame yourself. Why I don't have all these things? Why these people, they have all the things in their life, but me, I don't have these things. And then again, because you are equating yourself with the richness of this world, for the cares of this world, then you are falling away to the will of God. It is very simple to deceive people right now. If you are going to preach, if you are going to teach on how to prosper, on how to get things what you would like in your life, people will listen to you because they would like to get whatever they would like in their life. That is human nature. And they will not seek what God wants for their life, but they will seek what they would like in their life. 
And that is what is happening in this world. They are falling away from the true purpose of God in their life. The word that is planted in the hearts have been easily contaminated by the curse of this world. And what is the result? They will become unfruitful. Nowadays, uh, if somebody is doing good works, what they are going to do? For example, If one person is doing good works, what they are going to do? They are going to do like this. If they could see other people doing good works, they are going to video that good works and post it in their walls, post it in their Facebook, and post it in everywhere. Then what happened? They are showing themselves that they are a very good person because they have done something very good. And the curse of this world is they are looking of so many likes when they post something and there are lots of people liking on that what they are posting they are feeling that they are accomplishing something in their life so they become <coughs> deceived and their cares is about this world if you are going to read in Matthew chapter 6 verse 1 if you are going to do good deeds, if you are going to give alms, let not your left arm or left hand knows what your right hand has done. Keep it secret. And those things that you have done in secret, God will reward you openly. Read the Bible in Matthew chapter 6 before that. That whatever you do in secret, God will reward you openly. Why? do people do these things because their standard are already based on the cares of this world i am going to elaborate on that matter for example the cares of this world for example in eating okay people they equate themselves that you are uh, a person that having enough money if you can eat three times a day plus 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 when you say plus 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 you eat your breakfast and then in the middle of that before, before lunch you are going to eat again then by lunch you eat and then after lunch you eat your snacks then after snacks you eat again your dinner after dinner you eat something again before going to sleep. That's why there is a plus plus. And they are equating again as a normal person that you have to eat three times a day plus plus plus. So they are equating that in order to be part of the community, of the normal community, they should be doing the same thing. They are equating themselves based on the cares of this world. What else? They crave for food. Uh, that is the reason why so many people, when they have the resources in their life, are really getting fat. Sorry to say, but that is the truth. That is the reality. They are getting fat. Why? Because they could eat what they would like to eat. They crave for the food. They crave for the food uh, and they eat in a cozy and fancy restaurants. Like for example, they are going to post in their Facebook or whatever that they are eating here. They are going to post what they are going to eat. They are going to post what they are going to cook. Everything what they are doing, they are already posting it in, in their wall. They are exposing themselves to the people around them in the social world that these things I am doing these things so I am part of the community the cares of this world so if they are going to eat in a cozy restaurant for sure they are going to take pictures on the food they are going to eat and show to the world that I am eating this food so that is the cares of this world and what they are eating what shall we drink? Some people 
they don't they don't uh, care to eat a normal water, but they care to to uh, not to eat to drink normal water, but to drink sparkling water, not just normal water, just to prove that I could buy things that is beyond normal to show to the people that I was able. And God has blessed me that I could buy all these things. God has blessed you not to, to show to the people that you can buy all these things. When God has blessed us, He blessed us for a certain purpose and not for our personal thing only. For the purpose of sharing the blessing to the other people. There is a verse in the Bible share all your properties, all your incomes, all the things that you have to the world. That even if you lose everything, there is heaven that is a reward in heaven that is waiting for you. When I am reading all these things, that is a, that is a reason that becomes my conviction in my heart. I'm not saying that all these things are bad things. I'm not saying that. Okay? That is a wrong concept. What I'm trying to say is, if your cares is all about these things, then you are already missing the mark. If God bless you for that, thank be to God. But if you are doing something because for that, then you are already missing the mark. If you are being blessed to eat and drink and wear the things that you like, if you are being blessed by that, thanks be to God. But if you are living in order to gain those things, then you are already missing the mark. We are not born in this world to show off to the people. We are born in this world to serve the living God. Not to serve our own ego, our own pride, our own uh, self. For crave for drinks, they don't want to drink water. They would like to drink soft drinks, sweet juices, milk teas, coffee. I'm not saying that these are bad things. But if you are working just to crave for the things that you need for your body, then you are missing and that is already what we call also addiction. And whatever things that is addicted to, that hinders you from the glory of God. So the same thing, they are drinking in a cozy and fancy restaurant. If they are going to drink one thing and if this restaurant is very popular, they are going to take a picture on that and show it to the people that I am drinking this kind of drink. That's why sometimes I am thinking, why people need to do these kind of things? For what purpose? To get attention, to get more likes, to get more loves, to get more click on what they're posing, to get an attention. Because their cares is already in the cares of this world. What to put on the body? They like to have a signature shirts. For example, there's a shirt that would cost a, a let's say, uh, a thousand of pesos or hundreds of reals for a certain shirt. But there are also a certain shirt with the same quality, but the, 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 the price is much, much cheaper than one. And believe me, because these people are already blinded by the richness of this world and the curse of this world. Even though in the same quality, they will buy, they will buy the branded one, the signature one, although the quality is the same. Because it is already in their mindset that if I'm wearing this and the people saw that I am wearing this, wow, he is a rich person because he is wearing a signature things. Like for example, for our ladies, 
he is using uh, Louis Vuitton bag, original Louis Vuitton bag. So the people are getting attracted to the bag, not to the person. Because she was able to use that kind of bag in her life. So they, they will conclude uh, that person is a rich person. So he is high, he is elevated, uh, he is above normal of the community. So he, she or she is showing herself that he is above or she is above the community and getting attention from the people. I'm not saying all these things are bad, but what I'm trying to say is if that is really the will of God. What they are caring for the body, much people, they care much of their body. They, they need to use so many things and put in their body just to get white, to get, get a smooth, smooth skin, a younger skin. So they will spend too much. Not only that, okay, they will even have their body operations. They are not contented on what God has given unto them. They are never contented because the lust already entered into their heart. Their cares is already about this world, not about what things God wants them to be. And even they will have their sex chains operated. And that is the reality that is happening in this world. It is really an abomination in the sight of God. Because you have rejected the gift of God that He has given unto you. If you are born male, you are born male. If you are born female, you are born female. There's no in between. The Bibles never accept those things that are in between. And the Bible says it is really abominable for those type of things. So the people cares less about themselves, about their body about what they eat, about what they drink. That's why if we are going to read again and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the loss of other things, why people are craving to get rich because getting rich, they could get whatever they would like for their body. And that becomes unfruitful in their life. Now let us read in Luke chapter 21 verse 34 in an easy English translation. But be careful and watch how you live. Do not eat or drink too much. I repeat, do not eat or drink too much. Do not waste your time like that. Do not waste time by having troubles in your mind and about your life. If you do, that day will surprise you. It will come when you are not looking. You know, Luke 21 is about the look of uh, the, this. Uh, it's like Matthew 24. Luke 21 is also where the Lord Jesus Christ is telling that uh, when He is coming. And in verse 24, He is telling that, do not eat or drink too much because uh, this is where the Lord Jesus Christ is coming, like the days of Noah. They are eat, eating, they are drinking, they are given marriage, and they waste their time about the things that they care about themselves. Troubles in your mind about your meaning they worry much on their, what they are going to eat, what they are going to drink, what they are going to wear, what they are going to provide for the gadgets, or all these things in order to be Equate, equating in order to equate themselves with the community, that they will feel that they belong to the community, that they are also a part of the community. Which citizens are we? Are, are we citizens of earth or are we citizens of heaven? Is our manner of living is based on the standards of this world or it is based on the standard of the word of God? You ask yourself, my brothers and sisters, so the question is, is this the will of God in our life? In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 5 to 6, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds 
and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Paul is telling to Timothy that you have to withdraw yourself to this kind of things. What kind of things? This corrupt mind that he's already putting his cares for this world and diverting from the truth. From the truth that uh, if you are high in your faith, then your lives you should be extravagant. If your faith is really very high, your lifestyle should be also extravagant. So they are equating the faith of a person based on the standard of this world. So they are deviating from the truth, supposing that that gain is godliness. And they are telling that if you have all these kinds of things, this extravagant life, this kind of lifestyle, that uh, you are having your life as a worker, as a, as a servant, as a Christian, that you have all these things, and they are telling that it's a form of godliness. What Paul is telling to Timothy, from such withdraw thyself. From such withdraw thyself. I, if you are going to ask me, there are lots of Bibles, verses in the Bibles that telling that God wants us to be blessed, that He came for this world, though He was rich, He became poor, so that we who were poor became rich. Do you think Jesus Christ cares for the richness of this world? He cares about the rich of this world? Absolutely not. The richness that he's talking about is the spiritual blessing of richness in the heavenlies. All this richness in this world, like for example gold, People are craving for gold in their body, to put in their body, and they are craving for gold. This gold, you are only going to step on the gold in the kingdom of God. What these people cares, we are going to step only in the kingdom of God. The richness that God is promising to His people is not compared to the richness that is in this world. The richness he's talking about is the richness in the kingdom of heaven. Because of all these things, you will not care anymore. You will not care anymore when you are with God, when you are with the kingdom of God. You will not care. Your, your, your love will not be on this world, neither on the things of this world. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Paul is telling to Timothy that withdraw thyself to these people that they are equating that you should be extravagant showing that you are really a good faith. You know what? What is happening in the Christian community right now? They give respect to a preacher that having a very good kind of life than to a preacher that don't have nothing in his life. Why? Because their judgment is, big, is, is, is based already in their eyes, based on the corrupt minds and not, uh, and not on the truth. And they are saying, this God, uh, this person is blessed by God, God is with him because his life, you see his life is so wonderful, it's so great, he's... Uh, uh, his lifestyle, I would like to be like him because his lifestyle, the way he lives is really extravagant. That's why I would like to follow this person because God is with him. What's the Bible says? What is the word of God is telling? Is that the will of God? Absolutely not. He's telling that if they gain all these things, that is godliness. No, he's telling from such withdraw they serve. Because Paul is telling that Godliness with contentment. Contentment means what God has given unto you, you are contented on that, and that is great gain. If we continue on that, 
For we brought nothing in this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therefore content. So if you have food, if you are still eating, you should be thankful. You should be happy. People are complaining if they're eating canned foods while the other people are eating lavish foods, extravagant foods, and they are comparing themselves. I'm going to tell you honestly, it's not the food. It is the person who is eating on that food. Even though he is eating lavishly, but his diet it's not there. So it's better to eat on a simple food, but you have a you have a good diet for that. That is the gift from God. So whatever for food and raiment, let us be there with content. That is my conviction to to the word of God that I've been reading. That's why I am sharing it to all my brothers and sisters. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and to many foolish and hurtful lusts which draw men into destructions and perditions. That will be rich will be rich fall into temptations. Now, there are lots of these things in this world that people care about. For example, if you are going to buy a property, a huge property, or you are going to buy a house and lot, you are going to buy vehicles, you are going to buy this, you are going to buy that, you are going to buy so many things that you can buy. And there's no limit. You are going to buy and buy and buy and buy and buy. Because technology is getting improved and you have to adapt to that. Now, in order not to be uh, deceived by the cares of this world, the very safest way to do if you are doing the will of God is to pray if God allows you to buy a certain things, most especially properties, house and lot, because those expensive things, pray if that is really the will of God. Do not buy things just to prove people that you have been blessed by God. A true believers in Christ are already blessed by God. When we are studying the book of Revelation, the seven churches, the one, the one church, Laodicea, Laodicea, he is telling that he is rich because when somebody is helping him, they, he rejected that help because he knows himself that he is rich. But what God said, you think that you are rich, but actually you are poor, wretched, miserable, and naked. But one church that's saying that he is poor, but in the eyes of God, he is rich. So are you going to equate your knowledge of richness and poorness based on the standard of this world or based on the standard of the Bible? So those people that are being drawn to richness, they will fall into temptation and snare into many foolish and hurtful lusts. Foolish, why foolish? Because they buy things, buy things here, buy things there, buy these gadgets, buy whatever things, in order to show to the people that we have these things, we could buy all these things. And they equate themselves that we, they, they belong to the community because they have these things. It will become foolishness and hurtful lust. And it will draw them to destruction and to perdition. Continuation for that in verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil. 
I know you have already heard this. I'm just repeating you again. For the love of man is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after means people are already looking unto for, for money. They have erred from the faith. Because they love the money, they have erred means they have departed from their faith and purged themselves through with many sorrows. Now, I'm going to ask you again. What makes you so what makes you worry in your life? Then analyze. Is that worry is the product of your cares of this world? Because if you worry because of the cares of this world, then you are departing from faith. Lord God said, Lord Jesus Christ said, do not be uh, anxious for anything, but instead, by prayer and supplication, make known to God with thanksgiving. Matthew 6, 25, take no thought for your life on what you are going to eat, what you are going to drink, and what you are going to put in your body. Because God is teaching us that all these things, the people cares, God already knows about that, and He will do something about it. Let us continue. But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. I'm not going to elaborate because I have to conclude this matter. In Philippians 4, 11 to 13, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned, and whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Paul is telling that uh, he's not speaking in respect of his want, because he has learned, in whatever state he is, he learned to be contented. I know both to be a base, means to be in low, and I know how to be abound, means when he is much. I could really relate on Paul. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry. There's a time for Paul that he is really full, too much food that has been given unto him. But there is also a time that he has to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things to Christ which strengthens me. This is the original context of Philippians 4.13 that I could do all things to Christ which strengthens me. Because there are lots of Christians that are using these things that they could do all these things. They could do all what they ever would like because I could do all things through Christ strengthen me. But the original context is he's talking to the people, he's talking to Philippians that he's, he, he's contented whatever God has given to him. Either in, in to abound, to suffer, to be full and to be hungry, to be a base or to be a bound, he is contented. Meaning, if there is no food, I can do all things. If there is food, I could do all things. If in need, I could do all things. If there is too much, I could do all things. That is the context of I could do all things in Christ that strengthens me. So let's go back in Matthew chapter 6. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or with what shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Now, as a believer of Christ, a true believer of Christ, actually, if your faith is really in God, you really don't worry about these things because you worry or your your cares is much about the things that God wants to do in your life. The things that He would like you to implement to do based on His will, not on our will, based on His will. And then sometimes things will come, sometimes things will not come. For life, for my life in my situation right now, 
I'm not saying that everything that I have is already here. Actually, now is the, the exact opposite. Before I, 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 I am living with, with a bound on the things that I have. But now, in the exact opposite, the exact opposite, I am living by the grace of God. I am living by the gospel. So my faith will be staggered, or my, my faith will uh, struggle because of that. Absolutely not. Because if the cares of this world is based on what we eat, what we drink, and what we put in ourselves, for sure, the faith will struggle. But if your faith is based on what the will of God in your life, you know, you know very well by your heart that you don't have to worry these things. You have to pray to God that even, even the birds, he could, he could instruct the birds to give you food to eat. He will provide you the things and that is the faith. So if the food did not arrive, are you going to blame God? If you were not able to eat one meal, because the standard of this world is you have to eat three times a day, plus, 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 and then if you miss one plus, you are going to blame God. Absolutely not. Paul is teaching us to be content of what we have. And be thankful in everything what we have. That is a true will of God in our life. Because all these things that what we eat, what we drink, what we are going to wear, these are the unbelievers seek. This is the one that cares of this world. This is the one that people is looking at. And for your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. So, my Father in heaven knows about these things. He knows already about these things. And sometimes He allows things happen in your life because He would like to show you one thing. You know, I, I am praying to God that uh, please Father give me something in order to pro provide food for, for one of my child or for my child. But the answer is not coming. The answer to that question is not coming. But God is revealing me something why He allowed that to happen. Because He would like to see, and He would like me to see the character of the people if they are really believing on God or if they are not really believers of Christ. So, when, when things is happening beyond the normal things, I am coming back to the Father and asking for wisdom why he allowed these things because he has a purpose he has a purpose and I have to seek that purpose so to answer all these things what do you need to seek not eat, drink or raiment or shirts going to use but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. What all these things? The, the one you want to eat, the one you would like to drink, the one you would like to wear into your body. Not, he's not telling that whatever you want, but he's telling that all these things shall be added. What things that the one we discuss in the upper verses? Because whatever this Gentile seek, your father knows already who is in heaven, all these things. And he will provide you all these things. What is the kingdom of God? For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So if you seek the kingdom of God, seeking the kingdom of God is seeking the righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. When when you have the righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, not your righteousness, not your peace, not your joy, but it is the righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. If you seek that and you have that in your life, then what 
whatever happens in your life, you have peace and you have joy in your life. Whatever circumstances that will happen to your life, you will have peace and joy in your life. You will not worry because your faith to God will be the one to give you confidence. I have nothing in this world but only faith in my God. I have nothing in this world but only my faith in my Lord Jesus Christ. So whatever things happen, I will glorify Him, I will thank Him, because He knows better than I know myself. So I entrust everything unto Him, and that is a Christian life. That is the way we should, as Christians, be living. And that is the reason why in Philippians 1.21, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. That even death could not separate you from the love of Christ. Even death, you are not in fear. You do not fear anything, because love has been perfected in you. Because there is no fear in love, you don't have to worry anything. But one thing for sure, no children of God that die in hunger, that is for sure. So church, I am just being honest and truthful to everybody on the word which I'm preaching to you. Because I need you to tell the truth. And and I ask the Holy Spirit to be the one to speak to your heart what really God intends you to be in this world. What is your purpose in this world? What is the intent of God for your life in this world? I would like to, to keep you from falling into the cares of this world and to be equated with the norms of the society with the norms for this world. Love not the world, neither the things that which are in the world. Because if you love the world, the love of the Father will not be with you. So let us pray. Father, thank you very much for your message. I know it hurts, and I know it's difficult. But it is not we or us that will do the things, but it is the power of the Holy Ghost that will enable us to do the things that you really would like us to do in our lives. We are not perfect. We are sinful in nature. And we, and not only sometimes, we really do commit sin because we are missing the mark because we are still following our flesh, the loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh in the pride of life. But Father, we are surrendering everything unto you. Let this weakness be turned into strength by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Father, I pray for those people that have heard this word to keep them from the cares of this world. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And they will not worry about the things, what they are going to eat, what they are going to drink, and what they are going to wear. Because you know already those things that we need. And you are pro going to provide the things because you are the Father that you are going to provide these things. But we would like to seek your kingdom, your righteousness, your peace and joy that is found in the Holy Ghost. So Father, we thank you and we glorify thy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much and I have a blessed afternoon and a blessed day and a week ahead to everyone. Shalom.